Know your standards with women. So now we're talking a little bit about women in this regard. So the first two is talking about, the first one is about God. The second one is about you. The third one is about other. And what is more essential to other than our complete counterparts, women. And there's so many examples of where men didn't stand by their standards with regard to women in the Bible. In fact, our first parents, Adam and Eve, are a perfect example of women wanting to overpower, overrule, step over the authority of a man, and a man submitting to his effeminate side, being weak and putting the puss on a pedestal and following his wife. Knowing your standards for women is about first, uniformity with God's will, second, being mission focused, and then bringing a woman into your life that would help serve that mission. Evidence of this actually happening really well. There's, there's, there's a couple stories, of course, Mary, is the most perfect story with regard to a woman who's in uniformity with God's will and is on mission, right? Christ's mother, right? She's like a 15 year old girl and out of nowhere, an angel comes to her and is like, hey, you're gonna have this baby and they're gonna call him the most high and your, and your heart is going to be pierced as a result. And she's like, whoa, wait, what? But what did she do? She completely submits. So there's a lot of examples. There's, there's a handful of examples, let me put it this way, a handful of examples of women in the Bible, Mary being number one, that submit to, to submit to this plan that I'm laying out for you. But there's a really good story of Isaac and Rebecca in the Old Testament, where Abraham has his one son that is his prized son. He has another son who's his, his illegitimate son, but his prized son, his promised son, Isaac. Make of it what you will. His promised son, Isaac, is growing up to be a fine young man. He owns property, he's, uh, he's an entrepreneur, he's a leader, he he's uh, cultivating the land, he's got cattle, right? All the things, <laughs> all the things that a man back in the day would call, make him a G. He, he's an alpha male back in the day, right? All these things, but he doesn't have a woman. And his mom and dad, uh, they're a little worried, right? Because he's just, so, he's just so busy doing the Lord's work that he doesn't have a wife. So Abraham sends his servant to go find him a wife, Rebecca. And there's a beauty, it's, it's explained very beautifully in this book on marriage and family. Let's see, on marriage and family by St. John Chrysostom. I'm not going to read it, but he does a great job of breaking down that story in terms of what the servant looks, what the servant does when he gets into the town where he's going to find a woman for Isaac, because Abraham sends him out and he says, dude, swear, swear to me that you're going to find the right kind of woman for my son. And of course, they had an understanding of what that meant. Rebecca represented so many divine qualities in a woman that if you just read this story, you will know exactly what to look for in a wife. She was humble. She was hardworking. She was hospitable. There's a story. Part of the story is that the, the, um, the servant says to God before he walks in, he says, OK, I'm going to walk into this city and make it such that the first woman that speaks to me is going to be the one. Something like that. He's like, God, he prays to God. He says, God, just show me the girl. I'm not going to go pick her out. You show me the one. <clears throat> and he walks in there and he's got his camels or whatever that they, he's riding on back in the day. He's got his camels or his horses and they're thirsty. And so he walks over to the well and there's a young lady there picking out, picking out uh, water for her family. Number one, first of all, for her to be there by herself back in the day like that as a woman getting water for her family must mean that she's a trustworthy woman. Because back in the day, they didn't trust women like that. I don't know why. I mean, maybe there's good reason. But there's a lot to be said for it just by mere virtue of her there working also. It shows she was industrious. She's working for her family. She's doing chores. But not only that, when, when the servant shows up, she offers to help him. She offers the elf, and so, so she starts bucketing out water for her his camels. That must have been hard to do. You gotta like, with a well, roll up that rope with the, with the big bucket. She's hardworking, she's hospitable. Also, she honored her family. She honored her family because when the, uh, the um, servant was like, hey, uh, 
my lord is a very uh, is a um is a wealthy man and his son needs a wife and uh, i want to take you back to meet him she doesn't she's not like these girls today that jump at any opportunity to get a sugar daddy she's like ah that sounds like a nice deal right like she, of course she would love to get out of this you know podunk town that she's in bucketing water but she's like i don't know you gotta come talk to my father and she brings him to her so there's a whole lot of things that are associated with standards for women that you can learn from these biblical stories there's so much value there's so much uh there, there's so much wisdom there but i'm gonna read to you just a few things here that i have uh that i've written down so standards for women evidence of a, of a relationship with god right evidence of a relationship with god uh carrying out their mission for god right she should have her own mission for as you do right she should know what she wants out of life as well does she read scripture does she pray does she meditate is she in service right or is she all selfish right these are all signs of evidence with a relationship with god if you want a relationship to work i'm telling you right now these secular relationships don't work and i just know because i'm watching y'all I was just graced by God that I was always a religious guy <laughs> and I had a wife that submitted to my religiosity and has always fallen, followed me into religion. And so we've always had a godly relationship. Having God as a, as a focal point in your relationship causes it to be that much stronger. Is she a godly woman, right? Is there evidence that she is, she has a relationship with God? These are all things that you want to look for with regard to it, does this woman meet your standards evidence of well-ordered earthly relationships just like rebecca right rebecca when she when she was approached by this man being courted by this man the first thing she said was let me go tell my parents let me go talk to my father you have to meet my family first evidence of a well-ordered earthly relationship with their family is something that i think is good to have for standards with regard to women I just can't imagine trying to be in a relationship with a woman that does not love and respect her father. A woman that does not respect the, the man that has brought her into this world, right, in partnership with her mother, a man that has brought her into this world and sacrificed his life through work and whatnot in order to provide for her, if she don't have respect for him, do you think she gonna have respect for you? standards with regard to women is listening to their to their language is she talking poorly about her father even if her father's not a great man all of none of us have perfect parents but her father tried his best and she acknowledges that and and, and affords him even the slightest respect due to his word that is a good woman i'm not I'm not bragging because it is only by the grace of God that I'm in the situation I am with my wife and it's been thus all these years. But I remember back in high school when her father, her father wasn't really a, a strong alpha male father. He, he wasn't there all the time uh, creating boundaries for her, but he made very little small boundaries that he basically didn't enforce. But Colleen always ab ab abided by them. He said, be home by midnight. She just, she didn't think twice. She never pushed that boundary. She never asked any questions. She never disrespected her father, even though he didn't command respect. I can only imagine that that's a part of the reason why she makes a good wife. And like I said before, it's not because I'm so smart. It's by the grace of God. So when I pull these things out to you guys, it's only in retrospect that I can look back and say, oh man, this is why my relationship works. She should have evidence of cultivated femininity. This is hard today. Most women do not show evidence of femininity. Just because she's showing you side boob, just because she got a big booty, just because she you know, looks pretty through the Instagram filters does not make her feminine woman. Femininity is less about the way a woman looks, although that's important, is less about her the way she looks her aesthetics because of course you know women make up the way they look anyway women fake themselves up with all the makeup anyway i made this joke the other day with somebody i said you you know how you know that men are better looking than women because women have to make themselves up men don't wear no makeup why women gotta put on makeup so if you're focused on the way a woman looks you're just focused you're focused on maybelline you're focused on shadows you're focused on fugazi if you focus on the way a woman looks 
cultivated femininity. Here, I'm going to read again from this. Uh, evidence of chastity in attitude, purity and reverence in conduct. Purity and reverence in conduct. Think about that. Purity, not swearing, cursing all the time with a bunch of freaking tattoos and piercings all over her, right? Uh, reverence in conduct, saying please, saying thank you. People don't have manners these days. Don't deal with these women that don't have basic manners. If you don't have basic manners, get your manners right and deal with women that got basic manners. What else? Inner beauty through a gentle and quiet spirit. This is all from the Bible, by the way. That's First Peter's uh, two, three, two. This is all from the Bible. I'm not going to quote every single Bible uh, verse here, but I'm just going to keep reading them. Inner beauty through a gentle and quiet spirit, not a slanderer or slave to drink. Not a slanderer. Think about how these women just talk jump behind people back. If you're dealing with a woman and she's talking bad about her friends behind her back or whatnot, I guarantee she's going to talk about you behind her back behind your, your back slave to drink don't deal with women that get drunk that's a that's a surefire sign that she's an unstable woman uh, teaches what is good self-controlled chaste good manager of the household kind and submissive she's trustworthy does him good and not harm all the days of her life Proverbs 31 12 works with her hands at various tasks Proverbs 31 13 brings and provides food and delegates tasks to servants and children Proverbs 31 14 provides for the poor wisdom and kindness come from her tongue <laughs> right these women have other things on their tongue like piercings and stuff wisdom and kindness come from her tongue that's one of the things my wife is always she's always speaking kindness is not idle in her household, not idle in her household. And you guys know that I'm a trad, right? I have these tra I have these traditional values. And one of the things I like to say, I like I truly believe that it is most resourceful and well ordered for a woman to be a stay-at-home mom. You want the, you you need somebody at home, but it's it's very important that she's not idle at home. If you got a woman that was is all about being quote unquote trad and she was, she's going to stay at home with the kids and stuff, but the house is a mess, or she looked like she's bored, or she spent a lot of time watching TV and Netflix series. That's an idle woman. That's an idle woman. You don't want an idle woman. You want a woman that's industrious, hardworking, that's doing stuff. Why? Because that's what compliments you as a man who's on your mission. You don't want a doll that stays at home just looking pretty but is useless. That's one of my dad's favorite lines. Don't marry a useless woman. So that's about knowing your standards for women. That's number three. 